Well, so for some reaction on the passing of uh, this literary giant, uh, Brad Don Matera, we're now joined uh, by writer and art historian, Percy Mabandu. Thanks very much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Peter. It's, uh, it's, I, I, I want to say it's good to speak to you, but these are not conditions that leave us feeling very it, good. We, we, it is a very sad take, day. Yeah, it's a very sad day. I think what's sad for me actually is that perhaps there's not a lot of young people and even some people my age who didn't quite understand how huge he was and his contrib contribution might have been. Yeah, I, I think that is part of the, you know, somebody just said in the clip that, he, you know, his death leaves us poorer. And I'm not sure that it's his death that leaves us poorer. I think it's, in, it's our failure to take account of mm -hmm. his contribution um, that leaves us poorer. So that for the longest time, Bradon had been around and only a few people that were actually alive to the fact of his presence amongst us and, mm -hmm. and the gift that he was to us as a country. And, 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 and those who are dedicated to thinking as a practice of citizenship. Yeah. Um, but Don Matera uh, was was a treasure, and I'm I'm not sure. I mean, you know that 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 it's actually his death that leaves us poor. I think it's our failure to drink in um, his his gift and to sit at his feet, yeah. you know, enough while he, while we had him around us. People have been paying tribute uh, all day and uh, talking about his various uh, aspects of uh, contribution and who he was. Uh, I want to spend a bit more time on his writing um, because in many ways that was a form of activism as well. And I just wonder, as a beginning, how we can put all of his work together and describe it. Well, I mean, I, there's, there's, there's streams that the Brazilian work, there's the, you know, the, the pro stream that, I mean, his autobiography memory is the weapon is another form of writing. And then there's his poetry that he's much more known for. But also, there's a kind of philosophical bent that defines much of his writing. And, and there's, uh, you know, the idea of the writer as activist, the, right, the idea of writing as service to, state, to the state and to the people um, is, is, is at the heart of, I mean, you know, what we had with, you know, some of the speakers on the clip who are older than me, you know, remember him as being a voice speaking to young people then and i feel like that that continued throughout his life if you read the poems that he writes in, in books like azanian love song there is a delicacy to his language but also a kind of consciousness about the the the, the moral call the higher ethical call uh, that it is required to be a, a fully a, a fully functioning human being in a society that is just you know, bastardized and brutalized as South Africa. The, the, the challenge to put yourself together against all of that. Pradon grew up in Sophia Town, and much of his work as a poet gave us a romantic sense of that. But he didn't do that uh, with, without also making us alive to the rot mm. and, you know, the, 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 the filth and the fury that defines Sophia Town. So in as much as, you know, by complaining or, should I say, mourning the, the death of Sophia Town through the post removal, he was also very alive to the fact that there was a lot that was wrong in, in, in that place in terms of the, the quality of its geography uh, and, and why um, by forcing people out of that, you know, the state was doing wrong, but also the staggering that, that was alive in Sophia Town. So he gave us a very complex sense of what that place was. Even in mourning its loss to the apartheid state, he was not so romantic about it that we lose the truth. But it was beautiful. So you know, this idea of using memory in a complex way uh, to reach into the past to find something that's useful, but also be able to point out the mm. pitfalls. I think that that's the gift of the complexity of his thinking that he continued with over the years. You know, Brazinga, as many you know called him was able to reach into what we may call the thug life of Sophia Town uh, as a kind of um, 
way of dealing with ways in which the criminalization of black life forced people into particular types of lifestyle. But even within that, he was able to retrieve the dignity of those he was writing about, even while he's dealing with, with, with subjects like gangsterism in the fire town and so on. Um, and so, you know, his ability to be a complex thinker is something that I found uh, as an overarching theme, yeah. or at least the stylistic, stylistic device in his work. But it was beautiful too, you know. Um, yeah. uh, Azanian Love Song is one of the, the most beautifully put together anthologies of poetry anywhere. And, and this, this capacity to reach for beauty against the ugliness of state, uh, in this context, the apartheid state, and even in the way in which he would attend to the failures of the contemporary uh, uh, post, post, post uh, democracy uh, uh, South Africa. He, he, he maintained that ability to celebrate what needed to be celebrated, but also be able to shine a light on, on the rot that he was able to perceive. He was a journalist, um, so we knew he could write. He, he wrote this, uh, this book, uh, um, A Memory is the Weapon, which uh, is world-renowned. Um, why do you think yeah. poetry was, was a powerful um, literary weapon for him? Well, because, I mean, you know, poetry is the art of the possible. I mean, in the sense that he was able to reach for those things that we often find is music, in music, but still have the benefit of his reportage, his use of the spoken language in its descriptive form. But the emotive uh, energy of song um, is, is nested in poetry. So to be able to bring these two things together um, is, is, is what poetry allowed him to do. The, the horror uh, that I am unable to imagine about what it would have meant to be born in 1934 and to be a teenager at a time when the colonial apartheid state is most strident, right? If you're born in the 1930s, you are born into the effects of the Native Land Act. Um, mm -hmm. you, then you grow up into Sophia Town where you are basically making a home and you're falling in love and you're making friends and that's taken away from you. For, you know, and, and so to be, to be able to, to deal with that memory, you know, uh, would not have been sufficient to only deal with it in prose or, you know, in reportage. Something extra that poetry is able to uh, deal with about the human condition, the idea of beauty, even in the terrible. So to, people talk about, you know, beautifully described horrible things. Um, you know, the, the death knell as a song, as a poem, is beautiful, but it, it deals with, 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 with horrible things. So Bradon, I find that he was able to find in poetry the excesses of language that could not be deployed through journalism. Um, and I think that's why he was such a great yeah. poet, that to be able to bring that feeling to bear with the honesty of a, of a reporter, of a news reporter, right? The, even the visual alertness of a, of, a, of, a, of a news reporter who's working amongst the people uh, as somebody who documents and somebody who sees on behalf of the collective. Mm -hmm. But also with poetry, he was able to feel on behalf of us all. All right, we're running out of time, sadly, but perhaps one final question. Uh, a lot of the stuff that he wrote was historic and uh, of memory, as you, you were saying. I just wonder what his thoughts were through his work about post-94 era? Yeah, I, I think, you know, Brazinga or Bradon celebrated the 1994 moment as, as somebody who knew and was alive to what it took to achieve. Many people of this generation did not think 1994 was going to happen. We don't feel it in the everyday now because we've been here almost 30 years. We think it, you know, this democracy has always been there. It doesn't feel like it was a time when it wasn't there. So he was, as a journalist, alive to the death and the blood that paid for it. In fact, his own life was, a, was, was, was sacrificed to a degree by the fight um, to achieve it. So he was alive to that and he understood how precious it was um, as, as an idea and as a reality. And, and, and so in the idea that you, you know, the, the price of that, uh, of that freedom is vigilance, 
creatively as a poet and also as a journalist to be able to bear witness to what's happening, but to not lose sight of how wonderful and how miraculous this freedom that we have had. And, and of course, many of this generation also were able to perceive throughout the last 30 years or so, uh, attempts to, to, to take it away. And what I mean by that is, is, is the, the dangers, yeah. wherever they may come from, to, to the freedoms that we enjoy, whether they come from those who fought for it or those who are resisting that onslaught. He was alive to that, and he, was, he never failed to articulate um, that, that sense of it. And that's why Bradon still visited newsrooms even his, in his old age. You know, when I was a journalist at the Mail and Guardian, Bradon would just walk in at any day just to come and see how the young people were, yeah. were holding on and to, just to share his love and his encouragement because he understood that the price of freedom is vigilance. All right. I really am going to get into trouble, but in 20 seconds, for the uninitiated, if they had to pick up one book, that best describes his majesty with words, which one would it be? Where would you point people to? That's like asking me which of your children are that. <laughs> you know, yes, right. I thought you'd say that. But, but, but I think, yeah, but I think memory is the weapon along with Azani and Lapstone, you know, because they represent two sides of, of, of his work. One is much more prose, even though it's beautiful to read him. But the, I think the power of his poetry is best contained in Azani. Love song. Fantastic. You know, that poem, the, the Protea is not a flower. You know, Azalean love song. It's the dream. Fantastic. Thank you very, very much indeed for helping us remember this giant. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Peter. All right. And that's uh, 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 a. Percy Mabandu, who was uh, sharing his uh, memories and uh, thoughts with us uh, about uh, this giant that has fallen, uh, Bradon Matera.